Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for visiting the Quixby channel. My name is Dee and today we are going to be talking about the color that you see on your monitor and how just a little bit off to the left to green or a little bit off to the right to blue can really change how you perceive the colors while you're designing something for a printout. Now for instance, the shirt that I'm wearing is blue and white, the shirt underneath is red. And look what would happen if I just change my monitor colors just a little bit. Now I kind of see that this blue and white shirt, to me, it looks green. So if my monitor were set up like this, I would think that I would be printing green. And we'll just take it to the opposite end just a little bit. And in this case, I would think inside of a design program, if I saw this, I would think that I was selecting the color purple, but it's not. The shirt that I'm wearing is blue and white. The color underneath is red. And it's very important to calibrate our monitors so that what we see is what we get, or at least as close as possible. I'm gonna show you how. If that's something you're interested in learning, See you inside. Now, in most cases, this technique is going to work best if you have a picture in your hand or an article of clothing or something that you can get a picture of and take a snapshot and then get it onto your laptop or your tablet, whatever device you are using to do all of your designing and your printing from, try to take a picture of something that you see with your actual eyes. You have a quilt on your bed and um, you could take a picture of that quilt, upload the picture into your computer. I'm going to take a picture of this garden flag this garden flag is a perfect example. It has a red cardinal, a blue bird, and it has some green petals. So I'm just going to take a picture of it and I'm going to upload it to my computer. You find something that has some red, blue, and green with it and get it onto your computer. All right, let's continue. All right, everybody, so we're going to give this a shot. I have to film this on my cell phone pointing at my screen because you're not going to be able to watch my screen calibrate. Um, I can't capture the video and you're not going to see the changes. So this is my iPhone pointing at my laptop screen so that you can see how everything changes as I select the different color selections. Um, so the sound is not going to be as great, um, but this is the only way we can do it. So the very first thing you'll notice is I did upload my picture. I took a picture of that flag and I uploaded it to my computer and I have it on about half of my laptop screen. Now, what we're gonna do in any Windows-based program, everybody has a search bar down here in their taskbar. And we are going to type in the word calibrate and it usually just pops right up and it's called calibrate display color and we're going to go ahead and click that if you don't have a search bar or you just can't see your search bar go into your control menu then go into your display and then find calibrate display monitor but here we go all right, everybody, let's get started. So now that we have these two windows side by side, we are going to click next and get into the calibration mode. Minimize that again. We're gonna click next again. And the very first thing that we are going to adjust is called gamma. Now you should be very familiar with the word gamma because in your settings, that we went through in a different video, and I will link to that. But in your settings, in your more options tab, you select either a 1.8 gamma and a 2.2 gamma. 
Um, and that simply is the relationship between red, blue, and green. That's why I asked you to upload something that contained those three colors. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the gamma on our monitor. And it tells you right here what we're looking for is good gamma. And good gamma would be very, very blurry dots. We don't want to see a white dot and we don't want to see these dark gray dots. But we're not going to just use this screen. We're going to use our flag to help us with gamma as well. So we're going to click next. And what we have here is this little adjustment bar. Okay, I'm going up and down and you can see you can see what it's doing to my screen and as it adjusts the gamma. It turns it a little bit blue, it turns it a little bit red, looks a little bit darker. According to the instructions, we want to get these dots as blurry as possible. We don't want to see a white dot, we don't want to see a a gray dot. We just want the dots to blend. All right, and not only that, we want to use our flag to understand gamma as well. So in this case, this looks really nice. Like I would actually prefer it if my flag looked like this, but it doesn't look like this. My flag is actually a little bit more muddled than this. And so I'm going to try to match the gamma to the flag that I actually see in my hand. Like how does my flag really look? And my flag looks a little bit like washed out. It does not have this high contrast. The flag is actually very subtle. And I'm gonna to try to match the gamma to the flag. And then after I do that, which I think that looks pretty good, maybe a little bit higher. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put my head down so that I am looking at this 100% eye level. You can't look at it too high. You can't be too low. You have to actually get your head down eye level and see and make sure those dots are blurry. But the more important thing to match is the actual object that you uploaded. It's why we uploaded it. So I like this gamma and I'm going to click next. Now that we've done gamma, we're going to adjust our computer's brightness and contrast. And if you're on a laptop, you most likely do not have a contrast option. Um, but if you're using like an old school computer with a real monitor, you might actually have a contrast button, but today's laptops don't really have them. Um, so we're only gonna be able to do brightness, but still, that'll be good. Um, but if you do have the contrast, go ahead and do it. Either way, I'm going to just click next and we're gonna do brightness and contrast. Now the instructions here tell us that we want good brightness and on the next screen, it's going to show us what to look for. All right. And again, the tip here is to not just look at this picture, but we want to look at the picture of our flag as well as reference, because this is a real object and this is not real, but we know what this flag is supposed to look like or whatever you uploaded, you know how bright or contrast or dark it is. So we're going to use both and let's click next. Now the instructions tell us that we want to be able to tell the difference between this man's shirt right here and his lapel and that we want to barely see the X and that's correct. Now just make sure that again you put your head down eye level to this. Like right now I'm sitting way too high and I see this X clear as day. But when I move my head down and I look at this straight on, the X is barely visible. But again, I want to be able to use my flag for help. 
Now there isn't any brightness adjustment um, lever on here. Your brightness comes on your actual laptop. Mine happens to be like over my number zero, but yours are somewhere up in your function keys above your numbers. So I'm gonna turn my computer monitor up and I'm gonna turn it down just so you can kind of see the difference. But I'm going to concern myself with my flag, first of all, and then I'm going to verify in that box. Now I think that looks pretty good because like toward the top of my flag, it almost looks a little white, but those fence posts are not. So I'm gonna to tone it down so that those pickets just look ever so slightly antique because that's what my flag looks like. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna verify what I see on this. I'm gonna bend my head down and just look at this man's shirt. I can definitely tell the shirt from the lapel. And that is pretty good because that X is barely visible. So I'm gonna click next. Now in this case, I do not have a contrast option on my laptop and it is very rare, but go ahead and look around, see if you have something that looks um, like a sun and a moon like half and half, that might be your contrast button. And if you have it, play around, um, but I don't have it, so I just have to click next. Now this is where all the color correction really happens. I mean, gamma is very important, don't get me wrong, but this screen here is where you can really fine tune your monitor to accurately reflect the colors that you see inside of your design programs. And what we're going to do is make sure that our monitor isn't too red, too green, or too blue, or a little bit of both. Maybe it's too much red and blue, maybe it's too much blue and green, maybe it's too much red and green. And Without these bars, I mean, the difference is so subtle. Like my monitor looks good when I turn it on, but that doesn't mean that it is presenting me with colors accurately. So we're gonna go through this and we're gonna use gray bars and our picture, most importantly, our picture, to identify whether or not our monitor is throwing us too much blue, green, or red. Let's go ahead and click next. Now you can see when we first approach here, all of the colors are off all the way over to the side and that's okay. I can tell, and I don't know how you can, I don't know how you perceive my screen through this video. I mean, you're seeing my monitor, then you're seeing my iPhone. Um, so you are looking at my screen through multiple layers. But when I look at my screen, I do kind of think that these blue, these gray bars do have a little bit of blue in them. So one of the first things I'm going to adjust is my blue. I'm going to turn it down a little bit and I'm going to watch my flag to see what happens. And actually, this is getting much more representative of what my flag looks like because the cardinal is actually starting to pop a little bit instead of being dull and muddy. Let me put the blue all the way back again and just watch my cardinal. You see how that cardinal is just not really, really red, but when I tone down the blue, he really starts to get red. Can't turn him down too much, but he starts to pop. That tells me that I had way too much blue in my monitor. Now, what's nice about that is I can also verify there was too much blue because as I turn down my blue, my bluebird is staying exactly the same color. Like he is not getting washed out at all. In fact, he's looking more and more like the flag that I uploaded because the flag in my hand, this bluebird is very, very soft blue. He's not like dark blue or high contrast. He's just very, very soft. But my cardinal is actually very red. Now I'm going to just move over to the green and I'm just going to 
take it just a little bit and see if I like what it's doing or not. And I'm just going to move it back and forth and look at my flag. And I don't really think, like to me, my flag, this, this green up here looks nearly perfect. The petals look really good. I think my bigger problem on my monitor is the blue. So I'm just going to leave that green there for a second. I'm also going to come over to the red and just see what happens when I turn it down just a little bit. And I'm taking to take a look at my flag in here because I see like my flag actually does have like some pinky peach hue up here. And I don't want to lose that. I want it to look, try to make it look exactly like it looks on the flag. And the cardinal, the cardinal though, he could be a little bit redder. So I like this. This looks perfect. I'm going to turn this green down just a touch to see if my cardinal pops. And I'm going to turn my blue down even more and see if I can get my cardinal to pop without sacrificing my bluebird. And to me, that looks really, really close to my flag. I like how now I can kind of see these flowers. I can kind of see the highlights in those flowers a little bit better than before. My bluebird is still very, very much blue. And my cardinal popped way more than, um, <laughs> way more than at first. My cardinal at first looked very, very pale. And that to me looks really good. If anything, I might want to adjust my brightness. And I'm just doing it on the brightness dial again. Now to me, that looks really, really close to my flag. I'm going to keep these here and see if I can go back to my gamma and get that cardinal to pop. And yeah, wow. It looks so much better to me now. My gamma was up here. See how that cardinal's kind of dull? And now when I move my gamma down, he's getting deeper, much deeper red, which is actually what he looks like on the flag. And if I take it even further, I don't really like that because my flag is not that contrast. But I'm going to leave him right about there. And he looks really nice and bright now. He's like the brightest bird on the flag. With the Actually, the brightest bird on the flag is this ye little yellow guy. But we don't really calibrate yellows. This is all about RGB, red, green, blue. It's all about that. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to skip that because we've already done it. And those settings stay the same. And I think I really do like this. I'm looking at the flag right now in my hand. And this flag looks exactly or really, really close to what this picture looks like. We've got the pop of the red cardinal. 
the picket fences aren't like bright white. I've got like some little grayish purplish blue down here on my flag and I've got some like white highlights on the tips of the flower. This bluebird looks really exactly like the bluebird on the flag. This little cutie um, looks really good too. This green is exactly what it looks like on the flag. This pink up here, this pinkish, reddish, peachy is also in the flag. It looks exactly like on the screen. And this welcome green, it looks nearly identical to the color on the flag, which is bordering on a teal, um, just kind of to the green side of teal. I like it and I'm going to keep that as my monitor setting. Now when we're all done here, we're going to click next. And what we can see here is our current calibration. So we're on our current calibration. This is all the work we just did. And I can click on the previous calibration to see what my monitor looked like before I did this calibration. And like, can you see the difference there? Like I had such a blue looking monitor. This flag looked nothing like the flag I am holding. Everything's washed out. The red didn't pop. Even the bluebird looks a little bit washed out. And everything looks way too muddy in here. But when I went through the calibration, that is truly, truly what my flag looks like. Now I know that if I were in a design program, I'd have a lot better chance of picking the right color because I'm actually seeing the right color. At the end of this, you can go through a text clarifying um, setup if you want to. I don't want to do that. I don't really like to mess with my text display. And I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to click finish. All right, everybody, I hope that you found this information beneficial. I hope you now understand exactly how to calibrate your monitor so that you can get really close to what you see is what you get. Because your printer, your printer doesn't understand what you see. Your printer understands numbers and Pantone colors and hex numbers. Your printer has no idea or no concept what you see when you're looking at your monitor. It only knows color numbers that you are selecting. So it's important that your monitor is calibrated properly. What you see is what you get. If you found this useful, please hit the like button for us and consider subscribing to the channel and you will get notified anytime we upload our next sublimation helpful video. Take care everyone. Bye.